Euro 2024 just ended. Spain won it all. So congratulations to Spain and congratulations to football because I feel like football won in a way here today. Um, but there's so much that I really want to talk about. For example, how bad I feel for Harry Kane. I know a lot of people are going to laugh at me when, 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 when I say this, but like, yo, to be 30 years old and like to really not have a trophy like that, bro, and like to be so close and to constantly be in, he's in big games and he went to Bayern to be in big games and the year he gets to Bayern, they kind of have like this fall apart season. It's terrible, right? Like I, I low key feel bad for Harry Kane. Um, but I also am really happy for football today because I truly believe that football uh, won tonight. And the reason I say that is it's not very often when the best team of the tournament that plays the best football, that looks the best, that's the most exciting to fans to watch, wins a tournament. And that's what Spain were. Spain were a team that were excited fans, brought young talent to the table, were, weren't afraid to go for it in every game, and never really played a defensive style. They constantly always went for it. And they were just a team that really showed us why we love football so much, right? Like the fact that we can all be on our couch chilling and that could be some random kid that comes up named uh, uh, Yamao. And then some 21-year-old kid named Nico Williams that no one's really talking about all season long. And Yamal didn't start every game for Barcelona. He wasn't like this oh, every single game he was starting and stuff like that. I think Rafinha started in front of him a lot. But he gets to this tournament and he completely tears up the stage, the both of them. Um, and that's what that's what football gives us. And then there's the bad side of football where you got uh, Cole Palmer, uh, uh, Cole Palmer, uh, Cole Palmer, Cole, Cole, Cole Palmer. You know what I'm talking about, man. Big Palmer, man. Uh, he's on the bench. And he was way more bright than Foden was the entire tournament. Is he a better player than Foden? Um, Foden showed us more. Obviously, he has like a, a, a little bit of a longer career. Showed us more on a club stage. But Palmer is in this moment um, in his young career that might have probably had should have had him playing. And that's on Southgate. And I, and I think that we, we do this with national teams a lot. I first want to say this. I predicted this tournament so poorly. Um, for example, um, I, I did not have Spain as a favorite. Um, I didn't even take Spain in many games. I would always pick against them um, because I just didn't know if they were real. And I didn't know if Nico Williams and Yamal could keep it up. Um, and, you know, I went into this tournament against France and Portugal and it, and, and, and Por France, Portugal and, and England were like the favorites for this thing. And I was like, oh, yeah, these are the favorites. They have like so much talent. They're going to win this thing. Um, and, and the teams that surprised me the most was Germany and Spain. Right. And the teams that were supposed to be so good disappointed me the most. Portugal and France disappointed me so much. You have Cole Palmer, who is having a great season for Chelsea. Right. And Chelsea really didn't have like a great season, but he had a great season. And the one thing that we do negatively with our na our national teams, in my opinion, is we take players sometimes off of names. Um, I'm going to go back to Euro 2024. That is the one that just passed. Ronaldo should have been there and Ronaldo should have been playing for Portugal. Facts. But at the World Cup, it can be argued, even by me as a Portuguese person, that Ronaldo wasn't the best player to be starting that tournament. Why? One, he wasn't playing because of the Manchester United drama. You guys remember that. And two, um, Gonzalo Ramos was tearing it up for Benfica at the time, and he was playing great at number nine. And then when he got that game against, I think, Denmark or something, he scored like a hat trick. So y'all remember that. But... Ronaldo should have been called because it's Ronaldo and you don't not call Ronaldo. Ronaldo is one of the biggest players to ever play for Portugal. But what I'm just trying to say is sometimes players get called based off their names and not based off of their performances. Um, and I think maybe Foden might have been starting more games than he should have because of his experience and maybe his name. Call Palmer was kind of, lads, in a really, really good form. So I think that England could have been more threatening with Maybe Palmer and Saka on the wings, Jude Bellingham at the actual cam position where he played this season, and then Kane in front. And I think one thing that national teams do poorly is you just watch for Southgate, you just watch Jude Bellingham have a crazy season, a Ballon d'Or type season. And it was more playing the false nine, aka cam position, sometimes number nine position, yet you put him deeper in the field. It just doesn't make sense to me. You have this guy that can score you a lot of goals, can can create a lot of chances, and you're pushing him very far back. And for me, I think, um, sorry for I'm a little bit sick, lads. Um, for me, I think that was a mistake, and I think that's what we do poorly with our national teams, and that's what Spain did so brightly in Euro 2024. They took Nico Williams. Hey, this is where you like to play. This is where you're going to be most successful. You play there. 
Yamao, who, hey, you're very threatening on the 1v1s, um, you're going to play here. And, and, and Morata, at so many times, you can say, oh, well, Jose Luz a better number nine than Morata, but Morata brought what the team needed. Um, t and, and what the team needed was those runs he makes. He's not this crazy goal scorer, but he makes great runs. The Spanish manager was okay to make decisions and the right decisions. We all sat down and said, well, you know what? Grimaldo should be playing this tournament because he had a re remarkable season for Bayer Leverkusen. And he went... With with Coco 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 Coco, Coco y'all know where I'm going with this one. Uh, he, he he made decisions that needed to be made, and he would make the the right decisions and the strong decisions. And I think that's what makes a great international manager. And I think that you know it's important um, for us to respect Spain for what they did because, like I said, um, you know sometimes you make right decisions, and sometimes you also get really lucky. I I think Pedri getting injured actually might have helped Spain. Um, I know that sounds really weird because Pedri is a phenomenal player, but Danny Olmo was phenomenal when he stepped in, um, and he took and he took control of that role, and he took control of that role in an amazing way, and it was exactly what Spain needed. Um, so sometimes you might be getting a start because of who you are and where you play, and you know your experience, and sometimes there's actually players that are better suited for the role, is what I'm trying to say, and. I think for Spain, sometimes they did that and sometimes it fell into their lap. With Pedri getting hurt, it kind of fell into their lap. Now, would Spain have been better with Pedri? I mean, none of us are, are, are future. We, we can't tell the future, but they were amazing with Dani Almo, you know? And I think for England, pushing Jude so far back kind of really hurt them because I think Jude Bellingham needs to be as close to goal as possible. Um, and I think he needs to be as pushed forward in that cam position as possible. If you're not going to play him there, you need to play him at the nine. Um, and I just think that Southgate may, maybe got that wrong and and we lost a lot of quality in Jude Bellingham because of that in my opinion um and uh you know I never like to use the word ghosted or ghosting or stuff like that but a lot of our better players didn't show up to the game to the Euros um Mbappe um Christian Ronaldo Phil Foden um, the list goes on. I, I could list a, a lot more guys that I thought would have better tournaments and didn't have better tournaments for whatever the reason was, but they didn't have great tournaments. Um, Bruno Fernandez, Bernardo Silva. Um, there's a lot of players that, in my opinion, just didn't have good tournaments. And then you had the kids that stepped into the stage and just had great tournaments, phenomenal tournaments, out of this world tournaments, you know? But we'll go back to it and, and I'll talk about it one more time. I think the surprise of the tournament for me was Spain. Um, on a national level, they haven't been the craziest team over the last three competitions, but they show up to this one. They took it by storm with young players. You know what I mean? And then a crazy, awesome defensive mid. Um, disappointed in the tournament, France and Portugal. Why? Superstar players, stud players, Bruno Fernandes, Bernardo Silva, Mbappe, Kamavinga, Chuamane, um, Dembele. Um, the list goes on for both these teams. Rafael Leao. Uh, they gave us nothing, to be honest with you. The games were boring that they played in. Both teams, I'm Portuguese, not going to say that. Portugal was boring to watch. Portugal wasn't exciting to watch in any of their games. Um, and France, really disappointing, couldn't even win their group. Um, and they were boring to watch. So two of the teams I thought going into it could be favorites um, were very, very boring. It hurts me to say that, but it's the truth. Um, and teams that no one really expected the most out of were amazing for Spain and Germany. So it's just one of those things, man, where that's what football brings you. Um, I, I still am a little bit um, shocked by this tournament for a couple reasons. Uh, we had a couple very bad VAR decisions. Um, that's facts. The stadiums were amazing. Germany were great hosts. But, um, I mean, in the Spain game, there was a blatant handball. Uh, in that, and there was a Germany-Spain game, I think it was. There was a blatant handball in that one. The Denmark-Germany game, um, I, I think the Denmark player was on side. You remember that one where they got him by like a tip of his... Come, that's crazy. I think he was on side. I think there was some crazy calls... Um, throughout Euro 2024, and I thought VAR would clean it up a little bit, and it didn't really clean it up that much, but all around, it was an okay tournament, in my opinion, if it wasn't, if Spain wasn't there, that tournament would have been boring, if Spain, uh, Austria, maybe Turkey, if those teams weren't there, Netherlands as well at times, bro, I, Germany, I think it would have been a bad tournament, bro, um, the big teams, the real big teams that everybody talked about were boring to watch, not fun, um, and it was a, a tournament to forget for Italy as well, who just didn't have a good one. So, so many of the big nations just didn't pull up. And so many of the, the smaller nations were really the nations that really, really showed out. And Spain is a ginormous nation. No one talked about them, but they pulled up and said, watch us do what we do. So 
Euro 2024, in my opinion, bro. Um, an okay tournament. Um, at times, uh, a little bit boring. But at the end of the day, it brought us Nico Williams. It brought us Yamal. It brought us a little bit of Cole Palmer. Um, it introduced us to a lot of studs. It also introduced us to AG from Real Madrid, Goulart. It really introduced us. If you didn't pay attention to the Turkish League when he was there, he didn't get that much playing time in Real Madrid. But if you watch Turkey, you saw the talent this kid has. Yamal, Nico Williams, Goulart, all popping onto the stage at Euro 2024. Things you love to see. It was a cool competition. But now we wait. Copa America finishes today, and then we wait for the big one. The World Cup is up next. I can't wait. It's going to be crazy.